Angry protests are spreading across the Muslim world against the blasphemous U.S.-made movie that insults Islam's prophet Muhammad. Protesters in Egypt and Libya have attacked the U.S. embassies in the two North African nations. It's not the first time such acts of sacrilege target Islamic sanctities in the U.S. We have this report. A cloud of tear gas hanging in the air outside the U.S. Embassy in Cairo as police try to keep angry Egyptians away from the American diplomatic mission. The protests have been sparked by a U.S.-made movie that insults Islam's prophet Muhammad. <laughs> On Tuesday, Egyptians scaled the wall of the U.S. Embassy and brought down the American flag. Everybody wants to express his or her own opinion that we will never accept that our uh, Prophet Muhammad uh, might be humiliated. Uh, and this is against even uh, freedom everywhere. Uh, as uh, somebody said uh, before me, uh, freedom everywhere in the world except for Muslim. Similar rallies are underway in other parts of the world, including Iraq. But anti-U.S. protests have left fatalities in Libya. The U.S. ambassador to Libya and three other American diplomats were killed in an attack in the eastern city of Benghazi. In this photograph, first aired by Press TV, Ambassador Christopher Stevens is being carried away after the attack. As you know, there's a dozen a dozen events recently, and the tinder is very dry in this region, especially in, in, of course, Afghanistan, Pakistan, but, but Lebanon and, and Syria that could ignite this region. This is not the first time Islam is targeted by such sacrilegious acts in Western countries, particularly the U.S. Last year, an American pastor burned copies of Islam's holy book in Florida. Earlier this year, U.S. troops in Afghanistan burnt the holy Quran. A few years before that, a Danish cartoonist's anti-Islam work sparked deadly protests across the world. Such acts of sacrilege are usually allowed by Western officials in the name of freedom of speech. But many in the Muslim world believe that they're deliberate and aimed at insulting their religion as part of a growing Islamophobic campaign. Well, to discuss that story a bit further, we're now joined by Mr. Randy Short, who is the member of Dignity, Human Rights and Peace, who is speaking to us live now from Washington. Mr. Short, thanks a lot for joining us. I wanted to ask you, as we've said, this comes um, in a line of many Islamophobic acts, both in the United States and by uh, U.S. Um, uh, uh, soldiers, etc., in Afghanistan. Um, do you believe that this latest incident will have a lasting impact? I actually hope it does. But I hope it is uh, a response versus a reaction. It would be helpful if uh, Muslim media groups such as Press TV were to truly educate the world to who uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was and what the Quran is actually about. And if anything, it would be wonderful for there to be a discussion of the Talmud for it, verbatim, for it to be understood, we would better understand what's happening in the world right now. Right, so then moving forward, Mr. Short, um, how do you see uh, this uh, reaction that, that currently we're seeing are there, are, as far as these protesters go on the ground? Many of these protesters have called for their respective governments to break off relations uh, or to at least ask the United States to hold accountable uh, the people behind this video. Do you believe that those are positive moves and that that, that will actually be respected by the U.S. government? I think it's legitimate. Uh, you know... <laughs> the, they've been insulted. Uh, there's a constant. There's been nothing since the discovery of oil in 18, 1908 uh, over in Iran uh, and the importance of petroleum in the early uh, uh, 1900s. There's been nothing but abuse of the Arab and Muslim world. And this is a breaking point. People who have nothing else to rely on go to God when you attack their core beliefs, they should expect this kind of reaction. And in reality, requesting that the people be brought to justice who've made this vulgar, sacrilegious, pornographic piece of trash is, is nonviolent, it's rational, 
and it's showing the same people who are stereotyped as terrorists who have no respect for law are asking for law and common sense to, to manage the day versus this cloak and dagger Zionistic attack on Islam. All right, so Mr. Short, I, I want you to expand on what you just said. Do you believe that the U.S. government and U.S. officials will then uh, use common sense and law to, in their reaction to this incident? <sighs> That's a tough question. Uh, you'd probably need to, if APAC wanted them to do something about it, I'm certain that those persons who made this film and funded it would be on their way on an extradition flight to wherever they needed to go. But there is a conflation of interest of Zionist and of imperialist and militarist and elitist who see Islamophobia, hatred of Islam, and war as a way to make money. And the other thing that I need to say to you about this film, it shows up at a curious time where people in Western societies like myself, who happen to be Christians, are looking at things almost from a Muslim perspective. Uh, you've got boycotts. I mean, you have Christian churches that are siding with the people, the heroic people of Gaza. They're siding with people in Bahrain and in Yemen, and they want peace. So they invent this thing as a distraction to get those persons who empathize with Muslims, who are tired of seeing them be killed and blown up and their resources stolen. I do sincerely apologize for interrupting you, Mr. Tension, Short. Um, that they can use religion uh, But we will have to, to unfortunately leave it another. there for now. That was Mr. Randy Short, member of Dignity, Human Rights, and Peace, speaking to us live from Washington. Mr. Short, as always, we do appreciate your insight here on Press TV.